Depending on who you ask, this metal box is either the planet's saviour or a family's worst nightmare, leaving you freezing cold and bankrupt by winter. I've had this heat pump for over 5 months, and I'm not here to sell you a dream or push a product. No sponsorship, no government hype, just the raw truth from a real family with kids living with one. If you're sitting on the fence, terrified of ditching your gas boiler, and confused by the heat pump hype, I get it, I was there too. But stick around, I'm answering all your burning questions, why all the controversy, how loud it really is, and what our installation was like. And I'll show you why when you install a heat pump, it's important to find the best electricity tariff to maximize your savings. Let's head inside into the warmth and get real about heat pumps. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. And for over a decade, I've been actively building my energy assets, boosting my energy security, all whilst cutting down my bills. If you had asked me two years ago, I would have told you that a heat pump simply wouldn't work in my house. I honestly believe they were just for brand new eco mansions. You know, the ones with triple glazing and airtight seals. I looked at my radiators with the dreaded microbore, my window with the draft you can feel when you're close to it, and my leaky dot and dab living room walls. And I thought, if I put a heat pump in here, I'll be freezing in December and bankrupt by January. But then I started ignoring the noise and started looking into the facts for myself. I found out that a modern gas boiler is at best 85% efficient, while a heat pump is 300 to 400% efficient. More specifically for us, our 26 year old boiler was actually around 76% efficient. For every one kilo hour of energy I put into it, I only got 0.76 kilo hours out. So if the technology works, why is it so controversial? I think it comes down to three main arguments. First, it's a spark gap. In the UK, electricity is roughly four times more expensive than gas. That means even if your heat pump is incredibly efficient, the financial savings can be slim, unless you know how to take care of the back of house stuff, like using an off-peak tariff or solar panels and or battery storage, which I'll come on to later. Second, there's a massive skills gap. For decades, we've had thousands of gas engineers who do great work, but a heat pump isn't a boiler. It requires detailed planning and time to set it up correctly. If you get a cowboy installer who treats it like a gas boiler, you'll end up with a cold house and high bills. The horror stories you hear are usually about bad installers, not bad heat pumps. And third, let's be honest, there's a bit of a culture war going on. There are powerful lobbies pushing things like hydrogen heating because it keeps gas networks relevant. Heat pumps threaten that status quo. A lot of what you read is less about consumer advice and more about protecting legacy industries. So the controversy isn't really about whether heat pumps work. It's about money, politics, and whether you can find an installer who actually knows what they're doing and has been trained to a specific standard in the industry. Let's tackle a common objection to heat pumps first, the noise. Right now, this valent 7 kilowatt Aerotherm Plus heat pump is running and it's heating our house. Can you hear that? It's basically a low hum. It sounds like a fridge freezer or microwave running in the background. But let's be a bit more objective about it. So when I used a decibel meter, I got a reading of between 40 and 50 decibels. Just for context, this is about the same decibels found in a quiet office. Now in the spirit of being real, does it ever get louder? Yes, it does. When it's minus degrees outside and it needs to do a defrost cycle to clear the ice off the back, the fan spins up harder and does make more noise. You'll notice our heat pump is hung on a wall bracket. Directly behind this wall is our kitchen. At the dead of night, you can hear this hum and a bit of a vibration inside, which to be fair, I was warned might happen with a wall mounted unit. However, it's not really an issue as it's not adjacent to a bedroom. I think if your heat pump were directly on the back of a bedroom, I'd get it mounted on the floor, which should reduce any vibration into your house. We could have got ours installed on the floor, but the base of the heat pump would partially have obstructed the footpath here. And we can't forget, our old gas boiler was inside our property. When that got going, it would often make a loud noise and continuous hum too. But we'd just live with it for so long, we got used to it and phased out the sound of the boiler firing up or running in the background. We need to talk about the install itself. We've already covered the heat pump outside, but what about the changes inside? Now, this is where heat pumps are let down, not by themselves, but by the design and installation into your home. 
Regular viewers of the channel will know we had a zero disrupt installed by HeatGeek approved installers Green Home Heating here in the northeast of England. After a careful heat loss survey using the actual air changers rather than the presumed industry standard, our home's total radiator output rather than individual rooms, and despite us having microball piping, the HeatGeek algorithm concluded we didn't need any radiator changes. A heat pump works best with one of these, a hot water cylinder. This 300 litre hot water tank was installed in our loft, moved from the airing cupboard, only a couple of years before our heat pump survey was done, and has a coil size of about 1 meter. Heat pumps work best with cylinders where the coil size is 2 or even 3 times the size of this one. As a result, a couple of the energy companies that did a survey for us wanted to replace this tank, despite it only being 2 years old. Heat Geek, on the other hand, using their back-tested software algorithm, drawing data from thousands of installs, said it would work just fine. And it has. With these limited changes and therefore disruption, our install only took a couple of short days. For us, it really was a swap rather than a full-blown renovation. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and want to join me on this journey so you can benefit from learning from my success and regrets, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for free. It really does help keep me motivated to make videos just like this one. If I touch this radiator, it's lukewarm, not hot. If you're addicted to burning your hand off the heat of a gas boiler, you'll probably think your system isn't working. But look at the thermostat's temperature. It's 21 degrees, and it stays steadily around this temperature throughout the day. With a boiler, you blast the heat, get too hot, turn it off, get too cold, and blast it again. Four to five years ago, we installed a Tardo Smart thermostat with individual smart TRVs in each room to help us reduce our rising gas bills. We'd often just keep parts of the house being used on a schedule or boost specific rooms which worked out fine during the day when the kids were at school. But when they were back and using rooms more haphazardly, we'd often walk into colder rooms which were then not as comfortable to be in for any length of time. And it sounds a bit crazy, but we'd sometimes not use certain areas of the house, like our living room at night, as it was significantly more expensive to keep warm just to go in there for watching TV for an hour or so. A heat pump, on the other hand, runs low and slow, trickling heat in constantly to match the heat loss of the house. The house just feels warm and cosy. I really can't describe how much better the quality of this heat is. We've also noticed a reduction in the humidity in the house, bathrooms drying out better, reducing mold formation, and improvement in our son's asthma control. But this heating requires behavior change. You don't just turn the heat pump off when you go out, you don't turn it off at night, maybe you drop it by one or two degrees, but it never goes off. If you try to use your heat pump like your old gas boiler, you'll be cold and your bills will be more expensive. And it's so much simpler. I no longer have to readjust schedules or boost certain rooms to match our routines, as the whole house just stays warm. So how has this 24-7 heating strategy worked for us so far? We've heated our 300 litre hot water tank daily since the 1st of July and turned our heating on since mid-September. You can see from the MyValent app, since install on the 1st of July to the 1st of December, we have achieved a coefficient of performance or COP of 4.68. Okay, so the moment of truth, how much does it cost to run my heat pump so far? I always hear the argument that heat pumps won't be cheaper because electricity is four to five times the price of gas. So surely my bills would have gone up. Well, I'm going to show you how that's not been the case with some of our actual data from the 1st of July to the 30th of November. Note, nothing else in the fabric of our building has changed. It's the same windows, doors, and insulation. Now, I could just show you the fancy charts in the Valent app, but I've installed a Shelly EM device to accurately track every single watt of electricity my heat pump uses. And interestingly, the real usage is around 5% lower than what the Valent app claims the heat pump is using. The main variation seems to come from the central heating consumption data rather than hot water. It's worth noting that even with the Shelly EM device, it's difficult to know exactly which source the heat pump is drawing its electricity from for central heating during the day, i.e. from my solar panels, battery storage, or the grid. So some assumptions have been made here. Let's start with the basics. For the same period last year with our old gas boiler, we used 5,317 kWh of gas, which at the current price cap of 6.29p per kWh would have cost us £386.51. 
including the £52.10 for the 153 days daily standing charge. Over the same period this year, I've used 1,372 kilo hours of electricity, that's 848 kilo hours on central heating and 524 kilo hours on hot water. If we took the price of electricity per kilo hour on the current price cap of 26.35p per kilo hour, we would be paying £361.52. That's a saving of £24.99 compared to using our old gas boiler. But that's just silly. Having a heat pump and being on a standard tariff is a bit like owning the latest iPhone but sticking to an old pay-as-you-go data plan. You're not unlocking its full potential or for a heat pump, the savings it's capable of. On a specific heat pump tariff such as Octopus Energy's Cozy Tariff, you can unlock 8 hours of off-peak cheap electricity during 3 dips in price in 24 hours. I know I talk a lot about 24-hour heating for the best efficiency, but at the end of the day, I, like you, am a homeowner, and the bottom line for me is the price I pay. Now the bath does get a bit trickier, but I'm going to try and keep it simple. Assuming I can shift all my hot water heating and boost my central heating into those price dips, I should be able to move around 60% of my heat pump's electricity consumption into these slots. Hot water would cost me £70.58, central heating at off-peak rates £38.12, and central heating at peak rates £155.15. I estimate on a heat pump tariff like this, I would have spent £263.85 for the same period. That's £122.66 saving compared to using gas. You can see how utilising time of use tariffs is crucial in lowering the running costs of a heat pump. You simply can't do that with a gas boiler. What about if you have solar panels, battery storage and an EV like we do? Well, you could find yourself on an EV tariff such as Eon Nextdrive, Intelligent Octopus Go or Good Energy's EV Charge Tariff. Just bear in mind you currently don't actually need to have an EV to get onto good energy's EV charge tariff. Using the cheap rates overnight, you could charge your EV, heat your hot water for the day, and boost your heating. What's more, if you have sufficient battery storage, you can fill this too. Then use that cheap stored electricity during the day. I'm currently on a fixed EV tariff till April, with Eon for 7 hours of off-peak electricity at 6.7p per kilo hour, which has since changed to 7.5p per kilo hour, for six hours. In September and October, we had enough cheap off-peak stored electricity and solar in our battery storage to cover our entire electricity consumption, i.e. we used very little peak electricity. However, as the temperature dipped in November, we were often out of battery stored electricity by midday, which I factored into my numbers. So far on this tariff, with solar panels with 8.3 kilowatt peak and battery storage of 8.2 kilowatt hours, I estimate we have spent 35 pounds for hot water, 24 pounds and 86 pence for central heating during off-peak times, including that stored in the battery storage, and 130 pounds and 94 pence during peak rates. That's a total of 190 pounds and 80 pence, giving us a saving of 195 pounds and 71 pence compared to using gas, including getting rid of the daily standing charge. And there's the bigger bitch too. We've cut our household carbon footprint massively. With our old gas boiler, we have been contributing nearly one tonne of CO2 to our carbon footprint. You can see how leveraging other energy assets can further reduce the running costs of a heat pump. It's also clear to see that I don't have enough battery storage to run my house on 100% off-peak electricity. And it's even more likely that I'll be weighing up the pros and cons of expanding this in the new year, when I have a full heating season's consumption data, which I'll of course share with you. If you want to be notified when those videos land, you know what to do. So let's circle back to where we started. Is this metal box the planet's saviour, or is it a freezing, expensive nightmare? After five months of living with it, I can tell you, the nightmare stories, they couldn't be further from our reality. For us, this hasn't just been a swap, it's been a total upgrade. First off the cost, we aren't just breaking even. Because we're running this system correctly, we're saving loads of money, compared to running our old gas boiler. Then there's the comfort. With our old gas boiler and our smart thermostat, we had hot rooms and cold rooms. We were always tweaking the heating schedule to keep up with our young family's use of our property. Now, the entire house is heated. Every corner, every hallway, all day long. It feels like such a luxury, but it really should be commonplace. I'd heard stories from heat pump converts gone before me, but honestly, I didn't expect it to be this good. We're heating our home without burning fossil fuels. 
knowing that we're warm and doing the right thing for the planet, that's a really good feeling. And it never go back to gas, not in a million years. And this is the truth you don't want to hear. If you're relying on a gas boiler today or installing a new one, you're relying on the least efficient, most polluting way to heat your home ever devised. You're paying a premium clinging to dead-end technology that the fossil fuel industry is desperately trying to keep alive. Now, I will say this, there is no magic. It's all in the design. A heat pump will expose a bad installer. You can't just slap it on the wall and hope for the best. Ultimately, you need a highly trained heating engineer, backed up by the most transformative force in the industry, Heat Geek. Which is why you should check out this video right here to find out exactly how I got my system installed with no radiator changes, with the guaranteed efficiency, and all for less than installing a brand new gas boiler. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay warm, and I'll see you in the next one.